the Roman triplex Ackies. Mana poles were staggered in a checkerboard pattern allowing for extremely flexible battle lines. Frontline troops could easily retreat to safety through the gaps. Armies could maintain cohesion while maneuvering around terrain obstacles. Finally, middle and rear rows could press forward to fill the gaps and form a solid fighting line. The Roman legion would typically march in columns and deploy as needed for battle. The front line consisted of lightly armored velite, equipped with javelins, short sword, and a small round shield, and whatever armor they could afford. The velite were tasked with harassing and slowing down the enemy, buying time for the main body to form up. When the order was given, they would retreat straight back through the gap of their lines and awaited orders in the rear. The second and third row were made up of the Hastati and Principe. These troops were similarly equipped, but the Hastati were less experienced. These would make up the bulk of the main army. As the enemy approached and contact was inevitable, the middle rows would press forward to fill the gaps and ensure no flanks were exposed. The shield wall command was given and all groups assumed the testudo formation, providing extra cover against projectiles. As the battle raged on, the final row could be used as needed. These were the most veteran troops, the triari. They could be used to reinforce weak spots, flank the enemy line, or replace tired troops in the front. As the enemy scattered and ran, foot troops were often held back from chasing, leaving the cavalry to mop up the rest. Now let's try that battle again, but from the ground floor this time. I also adjusted the enemy's troops so that they had mostly tier 5 and tier 6, and plus 100 over our size, just to give a little bit more of a challenge. So we're going to start off again with the same formation. We've got our Velite in the front, we've got all of our main body in the back, in column formation, which is how they most likely would have marched to the battlefield. Now the trickiest part is going to be setting these guys up so they're spaced out properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have everybody follow me for now. We'll get them closer. That'll get them moving towards the battle direction and then we can space them out accordingly. I think what we'll do is let's go ahead and put our Velite up here on this ridge. And what I'd like to do is maybe draw their army off to the side and that'll allow us to attack them from a flank possibly. So if we can get them to approach from here and then we'll have our main body over here on the right. And if they're busy chasing him, we can maybe catch their left flank. Here we go. Let's start setting people up. Let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of room to maneuver. We'll put the Velite further up. So we'll start positioning these guys off a little bit. So group two, group three, and group four. But group five and six are going to be in the gaps. So what I usually like to do is do group two, three, and four. Hold control, and then you can select them. That'll kind of give me an idea where they're at. And then we're going to go ahead and move five in the gap six in that gap seven can be in the reserve uh, in the left rear in reserves and then same thing with eight in the rear right reserves so we'll get them all positioned out now here's the hardest part there's a lot of moving parts i mean it you could see it's a little janky it's not quite <laughs> that's as straight as my line gets man all right here we go so velite are starting to come into contact with these guys let's actually move them a little bit off a little off center more Oh, they're putting in some damage though, that's for sure. Now they are kind of just coming straight in, so this would be... Uh, I think at this point, contact is inevitable. Let's move our group 2 over there just a little bit. Group 5 is the first of the back row. Let's get them in position. Group 6 is the next. We'll get them in the gap there. And then we can worry about our reserves later. We'll just leave them there for now. Velte are almost, they're almost catching our line, so let's go ahead and retreat them a little bit. And then we're going to select all the front row. We need to get them into position here. Shield wall. Uh, group 7 over here on the left needs to reinforce. Yeah, we're getting flanked pretty hard here. Now they are starting to actually group up on that side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull group 8 over here. That's our far right reserve. Uh, we're also going to put group four, which is our rightmost flank. Let's get them. Oh, are they? Are they retreating? They might be retreating. All right, we're just going to push hard. Let's push on them. Let's get our Velte involved as well. We can we can slow down our group. Yeah, they. I guess they didn't like that connection that we made. We had a pretty solid line here. Now in real life. Foot troops were not really permitted to chase too often. I guess they would get in trouble quite a bit when they did that, so... Generally, you would have the cavalry come out and run down the people that were fleeing. So maybe we chase a little bit, and then we'll pull back. Alright, so it looks like they're, they've broken contact. They're just going to 
go all the way back. Let's make sure everybody's in line for mission except for Avilite. And let's actually allow our Avilite to continue to chase and harass. And then we're just going to pull... Let's start forming our line again. So group 3 is going to be somewhere in here. Group 4 somewhere over there on the right. Alright, we're all... Yeah. This is really hard. <laughs> There's so many moving parts. And it's without the top-down view, it's really hard to get the spacing right. I, I can move six or seven groups around no problem, but but to do that accurately with the, with the correct spacing is, is not an easy task. All right, so they outran our Velite. Let's just pull them back. I'm not sure what these guys are going to do. I'm going to speed this up and kind of see if they're just regrouping, and then we can go on the offensive, or maybe they're going to come back at us. So it looks like they regrouped. They most likely got their reinforcements, and they're coming back. So what we're going to do is let's put our Velite up to the base of that hill. I don't mind just kind of slowing them down on the hill. We still got to get our group. Uh, we're all spread out here, so kind of a problem. It looks like we took some casualties in group two, but they should be enough to hold. So let's regroup them a little bit better here. Let's get better spacing. All right, they're starting to come into contact here with the Velite. Let's go ahead and pull them back just a touch. And we just want to slow them down a little bit. And I think what we're going to do is try and be very compact here. We can just, we can leave our, our Triari in the back as reserves. And if they try and flank around, we'll use them to shore up the, the, the flanks. I think one-on-one -on -one we to have the advantage. So if we stay nice and compact, we should be fine here. Let's go ahead. Oh, what am I doing? I'm talking and not commanding. <laughs> These guys are supposed to come back. They're going to chewed up pretty badly here. All right. Well, I failed as a commander. Sorry, boys. All right, let's go ahead and plug these gaps. Yeah, we don't have time to plug the gaps after the Velite have retreated because there are no Velite left. They're all going to get stomped here. So let's go ahead and testudo up here. All right, group 7 on the left, group 8 on the right. These are going to be our reinforcement flank of the flank. Right, again, they're coming in kind of heavy on the middle and the left. The right flank looks somewhat weak. So let's go ahead and get our, our Triari involved here. I want to get them involved on this left flank. So I'm going to form them up right here and give them the charge command. And let's go ahead and get group eight or other Triari. I feel like we might have an issue right here. So I'm going to shore up this weakness. I'm just going to spread them out, throw them in into the gap. I'm going to give everybody the charge command. I think we're in a good enough position here. Now, group four is the extreme outside. Let's actually get them in line formation and have them flank a little bit better. Let's, oh yeah, they're running. These guys don't want anything to do with our flank. Look at this nasty flank. So they actually have more troops than we did when this all started. So for us to be able to flank, it means we were able to funnel them quite nicely. So I'm going to give them a charge command as well. So everybody's charging. Beautiful. Look at this beautiful, beautiful Testudo formation just crumbling them up. And that's pretty much it. This was actually really difficult. I wouldn't recommend this for a beginner. I do like the flexibility because being able to, you know, plug gaps, move for flanks, because we all know the AI sometimes will come at really awkward angles and you'll have a flank exposed. So having six or seven groups means that you can really bend very easily to absorb those attacks. But for those really tough battles with a lot of moving parts, this tactic would be difficult to pull off successfully and the risk would be quite high for messing it up. If you want to see a solo clan world conquest, click this video right here. A huge shout out to the channel members and Patreon supporters who help keep this channel alive. I appreciate you all.